Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news and we've got a couple of quotes for you today from club presidents and managing directors in relation to Manchester United players and players that we're linked to, which I always like. Uh, a few other stories as well, but I want to get into something that's really, really important. Manchester United scrapping a major transfer plan that in this time where we're all coming together, we're all trying to be united, that we were trying to fight this global crisis and there's a lot of positivity around our club. It is a shame to have to address this. And this morning I even thought, do I want to do this? But to ignore it would be absolutely ignorant for a fan channel to ignore something so very important for the club. And unfortunately, in my opinion, maybe not yours, must be highlighted as very, very disappointing and, I believe, a mistake going forward. And if it doesn't end up being a mistake, it will be luck that gives us the success, not a plan. So what is this all about? I've read it this morning. It's via The Athletic. David Ornstein uh, has quoted it saying that Manchester United have shelved plans or back burner, whatever you want to call it, to get a director of football. They'll continue as is over the last year. And this, to me, is a massive, massive, massive disappointment. Now, this, I think the timing of it by Manchester United, I must say, I don't know whether it's done on purpose, presumably it is because it's out there, to time it now is probably the, the right time to time it because people have never been so distant from football, people don't really want to moan, People, I don't want to moan. Um, and also we've had a lot of positivity around United with the with everything that they're doing. Real positivity around the club since January. Maybe it's the PR spin of Neil Ashton who's got involved with Woodward. I don't know. But United have done things right over the last few months. Even the signing of Bruno, which Neil Ashton would not have been involved in. So very, very, very good things around Manchester United. And in, over the last year, very good in the transfer market with wan Maguire, Maguire, I said Bruno as well. We've done well. But that does not, a recent success does not um, ignore the, the, the issues of the last six, seven years. And this is the director of football. Look at Man City, look at Liverpool, look at big clubs around Europe that are successful. You don't have a situation where you've got a president and a manager and that's the vital combination. You have things in between that. You have sporting directors, you have directors of football and Manchester United, no matter who the manager is, we needed one and Jose Marino needed one. Van Hal needed one. Moyes needed one. And Mr. I'm an experienced Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And I say that with total respect. People do not get it when I say this. I'm giving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the time and, 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 and excuse that he deserves because he's an inexperienced manager. He got relegated by Cardiff and he's managed the Norwegian side to a title that's managed to do it without him anyway. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is learning on the job. He is an inexperienced manager. That is a fact. It is not in any way meant to be he's not good enough for Manchester United. Look, we, we know loads of people who've been into jobs and been successful who have no real experience behind them. Solskjaer is inexperienced, he's learning his way. Michael Carrick and McKenna are inexperienced and learning their way. Mike Phelan has some experience, but you know, how is that enough? Ed Woodward is a banker. B banker. He is not a man of football background. So at Manchester United, we've decided we don't need an expertise director of football. We're going to stick with Woodward, Oli, Mike Phelan, Carrick and a load of scouts. I, I just, I think that's a mistake. I think I've, it's always been a mistake. I think many of you have felt it was always a mistake. And just because we've had, I mean, look, if you want to be really cynical about this, Ed Woodward has been in charge of transfers with other managers for the last seven years. And over the last year, it's been good. One year out of seven. Just because it's the recent year doesn't mean we're going to stay successful with it. I, th I think it's a mistake. I think it's a very big mistake. And what they're saying in The Athletic is that they want to maintain that vital relationship between Woodward and Solskjaer with nobody getting in the way of that. I mean, <laughs> inexperienced manager and bank manager. It, it, we, we need to keep that. We need to keep that strong. We don't need to bring somebody in who might know what they're doing with experience. OK, OK, we're carrying down that route. They also say that Manchester United want to give the authority to the manager and keep in mind what Sir Alex Ferguson did. Sir Alex Ferguson nearly retired 10 years ago. Sir Alex Ferguson came in from Aberdeen with success. Sir Alex Ferguson built up something up over many years as an experienced manager. I just think you're not helping Solskjaer by not giving him somebody to bounce off who's very experienced. I think we are, and also look, let's forget Manchester United's history for a moment. Let's forget our love for Solskjaer for a moment. Let's forget the recent successes of Bruno and Harry Maguire and wan -Bissaka. Let's look at modern football. What are Man City doing? What are Liverpool doing? They're the teams we're trying to catch. Have they just got Klopp and Pep 
talking to their chief executive. No, they've got directors of football, sporting directors, whatever you want to call it. They have got them. Peps came to Man City before even he did to put the groundwork in. Liverpool, I believe, have got two. And we're saying we don't need to do that. This has been a problem at Manchester United for a very long time. It's called. It's a word that begins in A and ends in E. It's not arsehole, it's arrogance. Arrogance at Manchester United that because we are the biggest club in England, and we are, we know best. But we haven't won a title for nearly 10 years. We're closer to 10 years than five, so it's nearly 10 years. And we don't think something that all the big clubs in Europe are doing, we don't need to do that because we've signed Bruno and we've signed Harry Maguire and we're going to sign Jadon Sancho, hopefully. Look, that is success and it might work, but long term, I don't think it will. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, is, and also, let me just say, in the modern game as well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the manager of Manchester United Football Club. What happens on the pitch defines Solskjaer. If he loses 10 games, but he's got a great transfer record, he's gone. He's sacked. He is there to focus on winning football matches. He is not there to also be running transfers as well. He's got to have an input on it, but having a sporting director or a director of football who goes off and oversees that with Solskjaer's input would be massive. You are abs What we're actually doing here is overloading our manager who needs to focus on winning games. He doesn't also need to be in charge. And to be honest with you, do you really think Solskjaer's in charge of transfers or do you think it's the same process we've had for the last seven years where somebody who's got no footballing background, who is a very good businessman, is still in charge of the decisions? Who sacks Solskjaer? Woodward. So you think Solskjaer's in charge of transfers over Woodward? No, I don't think that. I think we needed a director of football and I think it's a mistake. And I think it's, and, and, and you know what? I'm not going to get angry because it's not, we're not living in those times anymore. But I'm not going to hide, I'm not going to refuse to highlight something that I think is really important. And I think Manchester United have made a massive mistake again. And people will say, well, look at the recent history. We're after Sancho, we've got Bruno. Look at the recent history of the last seven years. This is the tactic we've used. Ed Woodward over a manager and no expertise in between. And I think it's a mistake. We're a massive club. All the other clubs do it. Why are we not doing it? Arrogance. Arrogance at Manchester United again that we know best. And this is the problem when you've got people like the Glazers in charge. They just do what they want to do because they own the club. And they listen to people who've made them a lot of money who wants to maintain control. And anybody you talk to about Ed Woodward will say, nice guy but ego and wants to run that club his way. He is not a football person. He's not a football person. He's a businessman and we need a director of football. And this is not about Woodward out, Glazers out. We should be getting a director of football in. It's very disappointing that we're not going to do it. And in years to come, I think it will cost us. Unless, unless Solskjaer becomes the next Sir Alex Ferguson and every signing he makes is a success and every signing he wants to make is made, unless that happens, I think we're going to, it's a, a mistake. And even if it does happen, it's just, we should have a director of football because how Solskjaer's time should be more focused on the playing side, not running the transfer side of things as well. But there you go. I'm sure some people will disagree. Anyway, let's talk about some of these quotes from uh, presidents and managing directors. Uh, President of Universidad uh, de Chile has said that Alexis Sanchez wants to play in Chile and retire in Chile. Well, I tell you what, let's sort it out. Um, unfortunately, this, um, you know, Universidad de Chile do not have big transfer budgets. They do not have big wage budgets. So we've got a player that we paid £30 million for, Ed Woodward. He said, we're wandering into the mistakes of not having a director of football straight away, inadvertently. Ed Woodward paid £30 million for Alexis Sanchez and he gave him four hundred grand a week. We cannot offload this Woodward mistake. Would a director of football have allowed that if they were given the right responsibility? I mean, it would have happened anyway because Woodward would have pulled rank and said I want to do it but this is why you need a director of football this is why you need a director of football but when you uh, in the summer of 2015 you sell Rafael at 24 uh, 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 Javier Hernandez at 27 Johnny Evans at 27 Nani at 28 and Robin Van Persie at 31 and you sell them for a combined 30 million I mean that is that's that's what happens when you don't have a director of football and you leave somebody in charge who's a bank manager there's loads of mistakes Di Maria's loads of mistakes we've made over the years because we don't have a director of football but I'll tell you what I need to move on from that so I don't think I don't see Sanchez going to Chile because financially it just won't work for us but I think we'd all like to see it um 
Managing director of RB Leipzig has come out and spoken about Upper Meccano and Timo Werner and basically said that they need to sell before they buy, but they won't be letting players go on a free. Now, to me, this is more relevant towards Upper Meccano, who's only got one year left on his contract. So what they're basically saying is that Upper Meccano will go this summer which is what we know, and they've got to sell before they can buy. Now, RB Leipzig are funded quite heavily by uh, the, the relationship they have with a certain uh, drinks manufacturer, but interesting that they're going to have to sell before they can buy. There's a very big um, feeling that Werner will leave as well. Will United be in, in any of those conversations? I don't know. Again, this is again we're wandering back in again. This is why we need a sporting director, because Bruno Fernandes... People say, well, we, we've moved away from being Brexit FC. We bought Bruno Fernandes. But, I mean, to be honest with you, Manchester United scouts, manager, Ed Woodward, would have to have been walking around with a blindfold and plugs in their ears to not realise that Bruno Fernandes was a good signing for United. I mean, all our fans were talking about it last summer. All the press were talking about it last summer. It was the most... Everyone did the scouting for them. All they had to do was go and look at him and go, you know what, they're right. Are we doing that around Europe or are we wandering back to the people like Longstaff and Declan Rice and Jack Grealish, Brexit FC? That's what worries me about the Timo Werners of this world, the Babakari Samares, the Sicorias, the, the Upper Meccanos. Are we actually doing what we should be doing in Europe, getting cheaper, better talent than what you get in the UK? I don't know. I, don't, I tell you what, a director of football would make us more European they would make us more like a Liverpool or a City who bring in players from Spain and Italy and France for reasonable prices who come in and are better than what you're going to get British talent I, I don't know whether we're doing that we should be looking at that situation at Leipzig but I don't know whether we're going to wander back to being Brexit FC again we'll have to see we'll have to wait and see because in fairness to Solskjaer I've said this before what is his background as a coach it's Norway and England and his playing career was England and Carrick was the same, and Mike Phelan was the same, and McKenna's the same. What is their knowledge of European football? You know what? If you go out every night and you eat fish and chips, and you walk past an Indian or a Chinese takeaway, or a Thai takeaway, or even a burger joint, if you don't go in there, you're just going to stick with your fish and chips, aren't you? Unless you're feeling adventurous. But that could be a risk. You might have a curry and not like it, and then you've wasted your evening meal. United need to get more cosmopolitan in their appetite for, tra for transfers. But I think too many of our managers and coaches at the moment are fish and chips. Um, we'll see. Um, Jesse Lingard linked to... This was in 90minutes.com, so I mean, I don't really know what their source is on this. But apparently, Newcastle, Everton, West Ham and Leicester interested in Jesse Lingard this summer. Again, be very happy for this to happen. I think all those moves would be good for Jesse. I've said it before. This is not just about what's better for us as fans and United, and I think that is a parting of the ways. It's also better what, what's better for Lingard. I don't see even how Lingard gets on the bench next season. So, But, you know, I turned on the BBC website last week and it's training with Lingard. You know, he's still a very high-profile, off-the-pitch, world-class player. Off the pitch. Off the pitch, he's everywhere. Marketing, Man United main account, BBC website running about on TikTok, whatever. Lingard's brilliant at that. But on the pitch, he isn't. it doesn't match what he does off the pitch. He needs to sort himself on the pitch. And, and he's had his chance at United, and I don't think he's good enough for United. But a Leicester or an Everton, he's young enough at 28. He's not 19, more like people think. He's 28 this year, I think, or 27. He can get his career back on track. But it's up to Lingard what he wants to do. Does he want to sit in the reserves at United or on the bench at United, playing the Carabao Cup games against Rochdale, but getting loads of exposure on his social media? Or does he want to lessen the social media a bit and focus on his football? And I tell you what, it's not as easy. It's not as easy as you think, because you know what's going off the pitch might be more um, lucrative than what's going on the pitch. I don't know, but I think Lingard needs to go, and hopefully the move, uh, the, the link up with Rabio means that he will move on. Um, Paul Pogba's been mentioned again. Juventus again, Juventus director this time saying that Paul Pogba, if he wants a move, is going to have to get realistic about his wages. I think this is very interesting and it's very positive if you want Pogba to stay at United because we know that Juventus want Pogba. In fact, there was talk of Inter Milan wanting Pogba. Uh, they've offloaded a couple of players, haven't they? Recently, like a card he's going to go or something. But I don't see. I don't think Pogba goes to Juventus, uh, Italy or go to Juventus. It's like it's like him coming back to England and going to Man City. I don't think he would do that. Well, then again, he did get offered to them, apparently. Um, but this is a problem for Pogba, isn't it? Because Juventus is saying, we want you, but we can't afford your wages. So if you want to come here, you're going to have to take a wage cut. And it's like, 
that's encouraging if you want Pogba to stay because if you look at the evidence that's there and it's not factual evidence of course um, the perception is that Pogba's agent is greedy and likes money and is Pogba going to go to Juventus for the love of Juventus I mean he came to Manchester United for the love of Manchester United but he also made a lot of money and broke the world transfer record so that love is somewhat diluted by cash is he going to go to Juventus and take a pay cut I don't see that not with Mino Riola so this is this is good Juventus want Pogba but the same we, if you want to come here you're going to have to take a pay cut Real Madrid may say the same in those circumstances I think Mino Riola goes ah, it's not bad at Manchester let's sign the new contract it's more money so that could that could be a, a positive scenario for United in those circumstances certainly uh, some interesting quotes from Bruno Fernandes as well coming out and saying uh, being a warrior on the pitch they might be my friends on the, off the pitch but enemies on the pitch I just love the attitude of Bruno Fernandes and he's and and, and and the when he goes onto the pitch he, he just switches and becomes um obsessed with winning and fighting in 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 a, in a fair way to win the game of football I think we just made a, we've made a brilliant signing there um so I suppose when you're talking about director well, I I can't give Manchester United much credit for Bruno Fernandes or Ali Gunnar Solskjaer I just can't I think it was the it was such an obvious signing to make that they messed up last summer they they made it late um, he's a brilliant signing and I'm very happy that the club signed him but it's not a signing where we sit there as fans and go Whoa, well done Solskjaer, well done Wadwood, we don't need a director of football I mean we were literally crying about not signing him in the summer and the club was going we're not interested so that somewhat again dilutes my uh, faith in the United transfer policy that you ignored signing a player that we desperately needed in the summer and then desperately went and bought him in January and only bought him because Pogba and McTominay were injured. They weren't going to buy Bruno in January if Pogba and McTominay not, weren't injured. And we may never have got him. So lucky. There's a lot of luck around Bruno uh, because they should have bought him last summer. And they may not have bought him in January if McTominay and Pogba ha hadn't got injured. So, you know, but I love Bruno. I think he's an absolutely fantastic player. Um, we've also beat uh, Arsenal and Spurs, apparently, to a 16-year-old from Sunderland called Joe Hugel. Um, striker, don't know much about him, of course, but another example of United over the years, they've been quite good at this, recruiting uh, younger players. I mean, we need to see some of them coming into the first team because, as we know, people like Mason Greenwood and, I mean, Chong did come over from Holland, but Gomez and Ch uh, Greenwood and Rashford, these are youth products that have been at United for a long time. We haven't really seen any of these players that we've signed at 15, 16 come through into the first team yet. So we do need to see some success from that. And a big week ahead for the Premier League. We know on the 7th, which is Thursday, it's a bank holiday here in the UK on Friday. Um, on, on Thursday, there's a meeting with the Premier League clubs. Touched on this yesterday about how um, some relegation uh, teams, they've not named teams, so it's unfair, but some of the teams that are in jeopardy of relegation are saying that they'll only play games at neutral grounds if relegation is off the table. And as we were talking with Ricky and Adam yesterday, how can you? What's the point in restarting the Premier League when Liverpool are going to win it anyway, and then teams can't get relegated? There is no point in doing that. Who's tuning in for that? Well, the only thing that is relevant is the fourth top four race. We may as well just get the teams that had any conceivable chance of getting top four to do a playoff. Chelsea, United. I mean, even that doesn't work, does it? But I tell you what, if there are clubs there saying we're not coming back unless it's if it's being played on neutral ground, just relegate them anyway. Premier League's got more than enough financial clout to do that. You cannot start in unprecedented times moaning about having to play on neutral grounds when you're not having fans there anyway. We're in unprecedented territory here. If we're going to finish the league, let's finish it properly. And if it's at neutral grounds, everyone's on the same page. Um, I have no sympathy for these clubs. Um, I have more sympathy with the championship clubs that might not be able to get up if we change the rules for that. So we'll see what happens on that. Make sure you check out the video from last night, by the way. It was uh, part one. It was meant to be one episode, but part one of the Manchester United tier list of transfers. De Gea was in there. Um, Matic, Mata, Phil Jones was in there. Martial was in there. Check it out. I think it will come up on the screen on the right, or you can just go through the homepage. Me, Ricky and Adam and the live comments last night, putting it into tiers. And there were a few tiers. Um, elite, decent, average, not great and awful signing. So that was good. Um, back again at 8 o'clock tonight and uh, have a good day. Smash a like on the video and uh, look, lots for you to discuss this morning and I'm sure you will do it. Speak to you all soon.